New tonight at 6 from the NBC 10 I team. The family deserves to know um, what happened to their family members and, and give them a proper burial. Getting answers for grieving families, that's the goal of a new project in the Bristol County DA's office. They're using new forensic technology to identify 12 John and Jane Doe's. NBC 10's I-Team reporter Tamara Sikarsik takes us inside the investigation. Sometimes it's a strand of hair. Other times, it's a skull. That leads you to family, that leads you to acquaintances. With forensic technology, a single sample of DNA can crack cold cases wide open, giving unidentified persons their identities back. We are providing that opportunity, that advocacy, to give them their name back, which is what they deserve, and it's their right to have their name. The NBC 10 I team spoke to agencies that identify John and Jane Doe's across the country, a process that requires evidence, science, and a little bit of luck. We are primarily a DNA laboratory. Dixie Peters works for the University of North Texas Center of Identification, which uses forensic testing to build DNA profiles for skeletal remains. We have to decontaminate the bones, we have to cut them into small pieces, we have to grind them into a powder, and once we do that, then we can actually extract the DNA. Once the DNA is extracted, it can expose a person's gender, eye color, and ethnicity. It's how investigators discovered skeletal remains found in Raynham in 2000 belong to a male victim between the ages of 14 and 30. The University of North Texas also created a DNA profile for skeletal remains found here in Taunton back in 1984 when this entire area was under construction. While that's a major step forward in the investigation, actually identifying the victim requires a match in a national database. Karen Binder works for the DNA Doe Project. The DNA match list is the most important part of a case in genetic genealogy because um, through the person's DNA matches, that's how we can figure out their family tree. DNA profiles from cold case victims are uploaded to websites like GEDmatch, which also has over a million DNA profiles from popular ancestry kits like 23andMe. If there's a match, genealogists can build the family tree backward to common ancestors. It just goes to show that the more people that are uploaded into these databases, GEDmatch and Family Tree DNA, the better chance that we have to solve each case. At least five Bristol County cold cases are now in that system, bringing investigators one step closer to piecing together the puzzles. We've solved cases that are 50 years old before. 50 years is a long time to wait for an answer to what happened to your loved one. We dug deeper into some of the Bristol County cold cases next Wednesday on NBC 10 starting at 5. I'll take you back to an investigation that started in 1996 involving a homicide victim known only as Pope's Island Jane Doe. For the NBC 10i team, I'm Tamara Sikarczyk.